Good morning. Hello. Good morning from California, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Todd Nock. I'm a professional comic book artist, and um, we're continuing with our coronavirus stay at home post it pop art art challenges here. So, last uh, yesterday on, on the Twitter, I posted a poll with four different Marvel superhero teams asking uh, the Twitter verse which character or which team member or which team with love in my lines, which super team would you like to see a character drawn from? Uh, the, the team that gets the most votes wins. So I had the X-Men, Defenders, Avengers, and Fantastic Four. And the X-Men took the lead and held it the entire time. So today, gonna draw Wolverine on this gray post-it note. So um, yeah, hopefully you can draw along with me. You're more than welcome to draw along. You do not have to have post-it notes. You do not have to have the same tools that I'm using. Draw with whatever you have on hand. The purpose of this is to have fun, maybe learn something, maybe grow your art skills by just a little bit each day. So um, yeah, so uh, come join with me. Uh, let's, let's draw, let's have some fun, and let's get started. Time to flip the camera around. There we go. Let me just readjust the, the clamp here. All right. So I'm going to start with my mechanical pencil. I personally use the Uni Kuratoga 0.3 pencil with HB lead. Oops, let's readjust the light here. Okay, casting a shadow, which I did not like. Sorry about this, gang. There we go. That's a bit better. Ah, better lighting. So, starting with that circle. Starting with that top of that skull, that adamantium skull Wolverine has. And then we're going to find the center line and then bring lines down from that circle to create the jaw line, angle it down to make the chin. Drop in the eye line, nose line, mouth line. Ears would be right about there. So these are my, you're gonna see me do this. If y'all have watched my videos in the past, you know this is how I structure each, each drawing I do. I, I start with my foundation I'm gonna build on. So important for me to, to, to have my foundation to build on. That looks like an olive. Yes, it does look like an olive at this stage, doesn't it? I could just throw a little pit on there and boom. We've got an olive ready to be cut up and put into a salad or a casserole, maybe on a pizza. Ooh, I do like olives on pizza. So I'm gonna drop the eyeballs in. Generally, the width between each eye is another eye. So same size, shaped eyes. That's gonna be your space in between. Bacon and olive thin crust pizza. I am with you on the thin crust. I love thin crust pizza. I love it so much. Now you got me hungry for pizza. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So you're starting to see the, the structure here. So he's gonna have his mask on and his mask covers his nose. So we find the, the tip of his nose right there. And he's kind of got a broad nose. So this part will be the yellow part of his mask. And from this part of the nose we can Angle the bottom of his mask over to, across his cheeks. Okay. 
Okay, so finally from the center of his eyeballs, I'm gonna bring my guidelines down here to know how wide I can make his mouth. Now that little philtrum, that little trough between our the bottom of our nose and the top of our lip, that kind of gives me a, a basis of how far down, how much space to put between the nose and the mouth. And we're going to just give him a frowny scowl here. So just kind of arcing a frown in there. And then the bottom lip. And then that's the chin right there. So we have a little space from the bottom lip to the where the chin protrudes out. And we have his cheeks right there. Going to adjust his jawline there, just kind of make it a little more square. Figure out his brow. We're not going to see his eyebrows, but I like to know where his brow kind of arcs. To get the right kind of scowl in the eyes. Scowl isn't just in the mouth, it's in the eyes too. Just like how we smile with our eyes. We don't just smile with our mouth, we smile with our eyes. Like when you're taking pictures, you know, your mom always says when you're going for school pictures, be sure to smile with your eyes. That's what my mom would always say. Don't forget to smile with your eyes. So you're not just giving this big toothy grin, but you're actually emoting from deep within. And it's the same with uh, how we draw the characters. Consider their eyes as a part of their expression, not just the mouth. How does it all fit together? So now I got the sides of his mask coming down here. Don't know how much of the ears we'll see, but I like to, always like to know where they are. So I'm structuring everything as, as best as I can. And so we have like where the wrinkles of his brow would be. It's kind of the guideline for his mask to know how far up to bring the mask into his forehead here. So it arcs up and then it comes down and then over to his ear. So that is distinctive Wolverine there. And we're gonna do the same to the other side. It's kind of curve up and then around. So it's kind of like this very, very loose S. Curves down, curves up. Curves up, curves down. And then arc that other side of his mask down into his ear. Maybe a little, a few more wrinkles there on his brow. Now he's going to have a bit of a thicker neck because he's a He's a stocky guy. His neck muscles bulge a bit. So that's just right from the jaw there, just gonna bring these neck muscles down towards the center where they would connect at his shoulder bones right there where they, where they all meet. Muscles gonna pull down that way. We're gonna hunch his shoulders a little bit. When did I start drawing? Asks Cheesehead. Cheesehead, love your uh, screen name. Uh, well, Cheesehead, I started drawing as early as I can remember. I remember drawing uh, at age three, I think is the earliest memory I have of drawing, and that was scribbling in a circle and loving it. Then that moved on to drawing stick figures because I remember watching my mom draw stick figures and uh, still have some of those stick figures my mom drew as she caught me scribbling in a, a little children's book I had. I was scribbling in it and my mom caught me and she sat down on the couch with me and she took the green felt tip pen out of my hand and I didn't get in trouble for scribbling in that book. She just played along with me. It was a really awesome moment. She just played along. The book was already ruined so what was she going to do? Scold me? Nah, she just said, oh, here, let me show you something and she started drawing these stick figures and it was so amazing seeing these stick figures come to life that I, um, 
I think that was part of what inspired me to want to, to continue to draw and to create figures on a page. So uh, I attribute that, that moment to, to my mom, who, um, who took a, a moment where many parents would be upset for messing up a, a book. She just saw it as a moment to just kind of play with me. And it's a very, very special memory I have. And I think a great one that, that, that is, was an inspiration to my becoming an artist. So, so that's why I started drawing. And I haven't looked back. I've been going, going that direction ever since. And now I do it for my career, drawing comics for Marvel Comics. So, thanks, Mom. So we have some dark shadows here on his shoulders, down his neck. Sorry, I got so involved in telling my story. <laughs> okay, and then all this part in here will be filled in black. Those little X's in the comic book industry means fill in black when inking. So let's now move to the inking stage. Any graphite pencil recommendations? No, not really. Uh, I would say don't use a soft lead. Anything softer than a, an HB, you can if you want. I personally don't. I don't like to use a lead that's too hard. In the H family, 2H is about as hard as I'd go. In the softness, I wouldn't go any softer than a, than a, than a 2B. I like HB. It's the middle of the road. It's like a number two lead pencil. It works great, and it keeps the art from being too smudgy. Do I ever flip my drawings to ever see if they look wonky? Yes, especially when working digitally. Definitely flip the entire canvas uh, just to double check everything. Absolutely, yeah. And sometimes, yeah, I'll turn it upside down to see. That's another trick you can do, do to see if anything looks wonky. Um, it's great that we mentioned that because maybe I'll adjust these eyes just a little bit. This is what I learned in seventh grade art class in junior high. Was to Actually, we did whole drawings upside down to change our perspective and to see things in a different way, to really see things as shapes. It's a very, very interesting challenge. A little story here, I'll tell you a little Todd Knox story. Seventh grade Todd Knox story. Uh, in art class, that, that art, art project we had to do where we had to draw an illustration, it was of, uh, just of a person, they were sitting as, I think it was a young lady sitting, reading, something like that. We had to draw her upside, and we had to completely, we saw the, the photo that we had to draw from upside down, and then we had to draw that upside down. And uh, so we had to draw it all like this. So it was really hard to do. But um, I, I got in trouble because I never turned mine in, but I know I had. And I told my teacher, uh, Miss Moore, it's like, I did, I did turn it in, I did. I know I did it. And she knew I loved art. So she was kind of concerned. Well, she did a little forensics and she comes and she goes, Todd, is this your drawing? I go, yeah. Another classmate had taken my drawing and had erased my name and scribbled out all around where my name was because he couldn't erase all the pencil lines and wrote his name in and turned it in as his artwork. So someone had swiped my art and claimed it as his. And uh, so fortunately I was able to get credit for my art and I felt really betrayed by that guy because he was kind of my friend. I mean, we weren't close friends, we didn't hang out, but you know, we definitely would say hi to each other. Uh, I have since forgiven him and stuff. I mean. Seventh grade, we all do things that we, reg you know, regret and stuff, and who knows what was going on in his life. So I, I don't hold it against him. Um, but in the moment, it was just like, yo, dude, that was my drawing. Why would you take my drawing and say it was yours? So there you go. Little story. It just reminded me of that story about, you know, drawing upside down, that, that, one, that one class or that one project we had in that seventh grade art class way back in the 1980s. I'm an 80s kid, if y'all didn't know. So I'm using the 08 Micron. I forgot to mention that because I was so busy telling my little story of the adventures of young Todd. Do I still mess up drawing sometimes? Absolutely I do. Do you know why? Because I'm a human being and human beings make mistakes. I definitely mess up drawing sometimes. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's just the way life is. 
So absolutely, to answer your question, yes. I believe every artist messes up their drawing sometimes because every artist is a human being and not everything always goes the way we want. A few little wrinkles there for his nose, over his, the bridge of his nose. So yeah, that's why we have erasers, gang. When we mess up, we have erasers. So use my art gum eraser or my block eraser here, Stat, Stat, uh, Statler Mars plastic eraser. Yeah, absolutely. But see, I, I mentioned this in yesterday's broadcast uh, live stream, is when we mess up, it's disappointing, it's frustrating, absolutely. Those are valid feelings to feel. Totally valid feelings to feel. Those are natural, those are, that's, that's part of being human as well. But can we learn from those mistakes? That was the one thing my dad taught me, is to take a chance, to try. Learning from our mistakes is what can set us apart. So, he, you know, so I had that freedom to make mistakes. It's like, okay, if I make mistakes, that's all right. Can I learn from it? That's, I think, a big part of where learning comes from. It's not just memorizing things, but actually trying, making the mistakes, and then you learn and, and approach it differently the next time. Like when you play a video game and you're trying to defeat a boss, you know, it's like the boss keeps defeating you because you're making some sort of mistake in your gameplay. But you keep pr trying, you keep studying what's going on in this, in this showdown, this battle, this situation, this level, and you, you learn a trick. You're like, oh, I need to do this and that because the, the boss keeps coming, does this move, that move, so I have to counter by doing this and that. So you're learning, you're changing, you're growing, and your skills are progressing in the video game. That's how I see it for drawing, for life. You know, it's like, okay, I made a mistake. It didn't work out. I tried to draw the muscle this way. It was wrong. Oh, here's what I, I should do. I need to make a baseball shape and then use that as my base as a structure to make the shape of the knee more accurate and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's like that. It's like having the freedom to make mistakes and know that it's just an opportunity to learn to level up your, your game, whether it's drawing, playing video games, whatever it is. That's, that's how I think much of it works. Your results may vary, but don't be afraid to try. Have you ever drawn Pokemon? Uh, golly, I want to say I had drawn a picture of Pikachu at one time. I have not drawn a lot of Pokemon. I'm familiar with Pokemon. I used to watch the show in the late 90s when it first came to the U.S. Watch the first, maybe... I don't know, first, almost first half of season one, uh, but then just kind of, kind of fell, fell off. Didn't really keep up with it. Which color Wolverine's costume do I prefer? Haha, <laughs> great question. Easy question for me to answer. Uh, for me, it's always going to be the brown and gold costume from the 1980s. That's, that's when I started reading X-Men comics. That was the costume Wolverine was in. That one will, will forever be my favorite costume and will be the costume that we'll be coloring here today. If you didn't take art in middle school, can you still make a major of it in college? Um, I, I'm not sure you need to speak with that college. Uh, I don't think you, I don't think it's required. Um, I went to the Art Institute of Dallas, so I did not go to a traditional college. Um, the Art Institute schools, um, don't exist anymore. They have since shut down. So, um, so as far as going to like a traditional college, I'm not sure what their requirements are, but talk to your school guidance counselor. Um, cause I think they oftentimes, uh, our, our advisors uh, to high school students pursuing, you know, what they will do in college. Uh, so check with them. Uh, ch check in with the college you hope to attend. Find out what their art program requires. Um, but uh, you would think that, you know, with, especially with so many schools 
um, you know, offering art as an elective that uh, not a lot of people who would want to major in art in college would be able to take art in, in middle school or in high school. So I would say um, check around your school. Ask your school guidance counselor um, or someone there in the office if anyone can help you research that. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to find the right course of study uh, for you. Just putting some little hash marks here. Now we're going to fill all this in black, but I want to erase all my lines first. Don't forget the other eyebrow. Actually, this will be all filled in black, so that little line right there won't even come into play. We will not see it once I fill in all the black area. But thank you so much for looking out for me. I appreciate that. So I'm using that kneaded gum art eraser to gently pull out all these um, graphite lines. Don't need them anymore. I'm not going to worry too much about erasing these lines in here. I'm not going to try so hard because they're going to get covered up with black ink. So they, they won't even be seen, so I don't have to really put a lot of effort in erasing those lines. The kneaded art gum eraser can be a good eraser if you find that the ink pulls off of the page and light gets too light, gets too faded when you erase. Try a kneaded art gum eraser and gently erase and oftentimes it can keep from pulling up the, um, the, the making the, the lines fade. Okay, so now it's time for the Copic marker color. This is so much fun. Now use whatever you have. If you have crayons, colored pencils, um, you know, go for that. Absolutely go for that. Someone asked, no bearded stubble? I'm thinking I'm going to go stubbleless. So I'm really going 80s with this one. He didn't have a lot of stubble uh, when in costume. I think maybe he shaved before putting on the the the, the, the cowl. So, um, so I am working with darker pepper, paper, so I'm going to use different colors than I would if I was using a white paper. So I'm going to start with some E02 to start sculpting in some darker color, color shapes. Now see, I'm, I'm keeping in mind the shape of the chin, the, the jawline, the, the muscles that pull from the nostrils down to the chin, or to, down, down to the, the bottom of the lips. I'm going to keep these things in mind. The bottom lip is a shape. These are the different planes of his face. Like if you look at a cube, each side is a plane. It's the same thing with our faces, our head, our shoulders, each muscle grouping. That's a plane. It's all three-dimensional, or as three-dimensional as we can make it. Uh, so, so I keep these things in mind, and if I have my light source coming from above, the lighter areas will be uh, on the top parts of the shapes, and the darker shadow areas will be on the bottom sides of the shape. And this comes with a lot, a lot of practice, a lot of study and practice. I continue to study and practice. So I come in with some E00. It looks kind of like it's all gray there, but once this ink dries, it will um, all kind of blend together in a really interesting way. Let's see. Let's come in with a little R00. It's going to be really subtle transitions here on this gray paper. Now while that's drying, let's uh, do the yellow part of his mask. So I'm going to start with some... What, what do I want to start with? I think we're going to start with a little Y19. Just a little bit. Actually, that's too vibrant of a yellow. So I'm going to switch to the Y21. So we got his forehead right there. 
So that's one plane. And then the top of his head is another plane. So I'm going to leave that more open because more light is hitting the top of his head. Now I'm going to come in with some Y13. And a little Y00. So I, I just work from darker to lighter, darker to lighter. All right, so now we have the brown part of his costume here. So I'm going to start with, uh, oh, and I'm going to fill in all these black sections here after I do the color, just to ensure, or just to minimize the risk of, of bleeding or smearing. So I'm going to start with some E17. If you're using Copic markers, these codes will help you color along. If you're using any other material, just use a, a shade of brown or yellow or peach colors or whatever it is you need um, to render yours. Feel free to make those choices as you see fit with whatever tools you're using. It's all okay. So that's E17. Come in with a little E13. A lighter shade in that E1 family of browns. Okay. So now I'm going to bring in some cool grays to do that realistic shadow I'd like to do. So I'm going to start with some E or cool gray three. I think that'll be dark enough here for the yellow part of his mask. So to show that the this part of his mask is standing off of his head, putting a little shadow right there, kind of gives us a little depth. Put some shadows there where his cowl meets. Actually, I want to power this down to a cool gray two. Cool gray three might be a little too too intense. Going to put a little shadow through his forehead here. And then through his face, definitely under there, under the nose. Right there, that little tiny line kind of shows that little muscle. Kind of gives him just a little bit of a smirk, or a little bit of a scowl, I should say. A scowl more so than a smirk. I don't want to beef up that a little bit more. Similarly to watercolors, the uh, especially here on this uh, this uh, post-it paper, the colors will apply darker and then dry lighter. So sometimes I like to reapply the color. Now let's go to some cool gray five. Let's try cool gray five for some shadows through the brown parts. So definitely underneath his chin along the uh, neck muscles. And then here under the eyes, gonna do that white pencil trick in a little bit. So I wanna prep that. All right, and let's uh, put a little bit of a fade, background fade, and then we'll fill in the blacks and then do my finishing moves. So let's start with a cool or a neutral gray. We're gonna go neutral grays. Neutral gray six. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull from the side in a wispy sort of motion. I'm gonna to try to create kind of like a, a frozen Canadian tundra, great white north feel. You know, Wolverine, he comes from Canada. So we're going to try to get a kind of a wintry sky sort of look. So I'm going to use several different shades of gray and maybe some colors as well. So let's come in with some cool gray four. Going to kind of change up our grays. It's a little more concentrated at the top and then fading to less concentrated towards the bottom. Let's 
bring in a little BV11, some purples in here. Doesn't matter that I'm putting some color over this part of his mask, because I'm going to be coloring that black. So that's kind of a, a nice leeway I have there. Just knowing that I don't have to be so gingerly, be so careful. When I let the colors merge together, they kind of blend together to create new colors. How often do I refill my markers? Depends on how often or how detailed my, my, um, my illustrations are. So it could be once a week, it could be once a month. Just depends on how frequently I use my uh, colors. I'm gonna bring in a little B01, the shade of light blue. Using mostly cool colors here for that wintry, wintry sky. Will I be attending Comic Con Revolution in August? I'm not sure. I have not made uh, convention plans that far out yet. So stay tuned for updates for that. As for all my convention appearances, with the all the conventions, so many so far here through the spring have been uh, canceled or rescheduled. Uh, a lot of us are having to figure out what to do because a lot of them are being rescheduled around the same time of the year, uh, most of them being July and August. So. So that's going to make it difficult to figure out which ones I will be able to attend with my uh, amidst my work deadline schedule. So now I'm using the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen to fill in all the black areas on his mask and then on his costume as well. So I gotta be very careful as I bring the brush tip up to that line. Do I ever get frustrated if my art is not perfect? I used to. Um, I still get frustrated, but what I've learned in my many years of drawing is to not quite, not be a perfectionist. So I try to throw out the idea of being perfect. Um, and that has brought me more freedom in my art, more ability to, to grow and develop in my art. Um, because I used to have such perfection, yes, I'd be terribly frustrated. And when I found that that was killing the joy of drawing, I kind of had to reevaluate. So now I don't, I seek, always seek to do the best work I can, absolutely. But I've learned to have grace on myself if things don't go the way I want them to. And if I catch myself be, uh, getting caught up in perfectionism, I try to course correct as best I can. Sometimes I still can do that, you know, cause like I said, being a human, it's gonna be natural to feel that way or think that way. But when I learned I can change my choice in what I'm, how I'm reacting to my feelings, uh, I found that um, I made I made greater strides in my art when I set, let go of trying to be so so perfect, but really just seek to have fun and do the best work that I can. And if I miss the mark, try again the next day. So um, so yeah. That's kind of how I f feel about from my experience with perfection or if my, th the thing I'm drawing isn't perfect. So now I'm gonna bring in this white pencil 
to color in the whites of his eyes. Just like that. And bringing in my white, my Uniball Signo, Uniball Signo white gel pen for that, that white outline I like to put around my post-it characters. Just following right around the perimeter here. Just follow right along. How do I read comments while drawing? You know, I can just glance over here at my camera and I can see the, the posts pop up. I try to try to read any that I, I am able to while drawing. Not able to respond to every comment, but sometimes I'm able to catch a few of them if, if it pops up during a certain portion of my illustration where I can take a quick little peek. Okay, so uh, I want to add one more trick to this, one more little kind of detail to really kind of bring home this frozen tundra. So um, I'm going to resharpen my white pencil here. We're going to add a few, few environmental details to give this illustration a little more pop. Okay. What is the starting color of this post-it note? It's a uh, gray, a dark gray. So I'm using my French curve here. And we're gonna draw in some um, wisps of, of snow. Using the colored pencil. So like the wind is blowing here, kind of blowing some snow through. Across his body and behind him as well. So that kind of gets some stuff started here with the white colored pencil. It's kind of faint, so it just kind of gives a sense, just kind of a, a sense of distance, because it's not that, vi that, that super white or vibrant. So it's not too overpowering, but I do want to come in with some uh, white gel pen as well. I'm using the Jelly Roll. Can't really see the logo there, but the Jelly Roll white gel pen, pen, not gel pen. Don't know what a pen is, a gel pen. And we're going to put in some more vibrant wisps here. To bring some of this snow towards the foreground. And then one more little move here is we need to put, drop in some 
big chunky snowflakes. So I'm using, going back to the Uniball Signo gel pen. I'm just going to try to stagger these through here as best as I can. Don't want it too uniform. Don't want it to almost look like polka dots. So I'm trying to vary my shapes and sizes. Well, the shapes are pretty much pretty similar because they're like s snowflakes pulling from one side to the other. So it's not quite circles. So they're almost like ovals. But at least try to vary the size of them. Some big ones, some small ones. Put some more on his shoulders, like that's where some snow has accumulated. So it really kind of kind of puts Wolverine in a wintry scene. Some happy little snowflakes. He's out there. Maybe he's he's tracking down Sabretooth across the Yukon and uh, looking to maybe stop stop Sabretooth from some nefarious scheme or seeking some sort of retribution because you know wolverine he's out there doing his thing with all his his weapon h uh weapon x enhancements with his adamantium skeleton and his feral senses leading him to where he wants to be i'm bob rossing this am i are you picking up on the narrative here i'm totally bob rossing this illustration love bob ross big fan of his work big fan of his videos have been a fan ever since i was a kid in the 1980s. So there we go. Snowy Wolverine. So let's uh, let me put my signature on here and the, today's date and this illustration will be done. I purposefully tried not to put too much snow through here so I wouldn't have to draw over it with my um, my uh, my my pen here. So uh, let's see, I think today is the 24th. Is that correct, everybody? Yes, it is. The 24th of March. So two, four, March, 2020. Boom. Snow day Wolverine. In fact, I wanna just put a little piece, some little bits of snow right through there. There we go. Got to be careful not to add too much snow. I could just keep doing this over and over and over again until it's just nothing but snow. And that would be bad. So I got to learn how, when to say when, stop. Let's step away and let this be, be just enough. So let me flip the camera around and we can uh, sign off here. Got to adjust the rig. Okay, let me uh, plug the camera back into the rig to sign off. Let's see, is it normal that drawing and coloring digitally takes longer than traditional? Um, it depends. It depends on one's skill set. Um, for me, digital still takes a little more time in certain aspects of drawing. In other ways, it can be faster. So uh, I'm more used to traditional, so I'm more uh, adapt at that, so I'm going to be able to be more timely when drawing traditionally. But the more I utilize digital, the more comfortable I become with it, the more I, I, I learn it and, and, and know it, then I can be more timely with how I draw digitally. So I think it's just kind of balancing the scales there is what it takes. And that comes with investing the time and working digitally to get your art skills up to the same level as the traditional. And that takes time because drawing tradi traditionally can be quite different than drawing, uh, drawing digitally can be quite different than drawing traditionally and vice versa. Do I draw landscapes? Uh, not just solely landscapes, but I have drawn landscapes in the comic books I draw if the character's out in the woods, the field, the mountains, 
wherever they're at. So in draw, when you're drawing comic books, you have to draw everything that exists plus whatever you can make up, like uh, Alien World. So I have to be able to draw a field, a meadow, a mountain, a doctor's office, a supermarket, a classroom, a government facility, uh, a space station, uh, spaceships, alien worlds, alien critters, as well as human beings, dogs, cats, cows, and camels. So it's it can be just about anything, but that's the nature of being a comic book artist is we are world, world builders. We're world creators as well as storytellers. Gang, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're doing well during this coronavirus stay-at-home season. Hopefully you had fun drawing along with me here with Wolverine. And um, I will be posting a shot of this on my social media, which I will have those links in my video description below. In, in the meantime, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as at Todd Knock, and on Facebook, Art of Todd Knock. Look up Art of Todd Knock on Facebook. You can find me there. Uh, gang, thanks so much. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying well. I hope you're staying entertained. Um, I hope you are... Um, you know, keeping those hands clean, you're not touching your faces, and you're maintaining that social six foot dif distance when you're out and about so we can hopefully knock this coronavirus out sooner than later and so we can all get back to normal. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of your support. If you have just discovered my channel, please click, click subscribe right now. Do it. Click subscribe right now. I, I, I implore you. And then you can tap that uh, little bell and set your notifications to alert you the next time I schedule a live stream, which should be for tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Greenwich. And uh, so you don't miss out on future live streams and art videos. And uh, if you like what you see, please leave me a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment in the, sec uh, in the comment section below. I do appreciate that support. Gang, thanks so much. Again, I'm Todd Knock. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Thanks for drawing along. Be sure to use the hashtag uh, post it pop art if you post your Wolverine illustration. So hopefully I can get a chance to see it. And um, yeah, keep on drawing everybody and keep having fun. Thanks so much. I'm Todd Knock. Take care.